looking at a big match here. We've got, on the left, Jean Coalier. Now, you might remember him and this list, or at least a version of this list, from Canadian Nationals not so long ago. He made top eight. Uh, and this particular list was a favorite on the stream. So we got some change up. We got Ben Rao this time instead of Ezra Bridger. And he's got adaptability, hotshot co pilot, and the stapled on flight assist astromech. He's got Lorik with draw their fire and aspiring recruit. So Lorik, so long as it's at range run, if somebody can take a crit off them. We've got Captain Rex to nerf the firepower on the other side by assigning the suppressed firepower token. Condition, condition token, token condition. Uh, and we have the star of the list, Heftober. Heftober this time has a different build. He's got enhanced scopes. He's got Zeb. So any ship which bumps Hef and is in his arc can exchange shots with him. Ooh. Which is a large part of the trick of this list. He can cram Hef in your face um, and not so be worried about Hef not getting a shot. So it's kind of like a rebel Captain Oiken? Mm-hmm. Well, the bump doesn't do any damage. Sure. But it's uh, a lot like uh, Arvel from uh, right. the earlier waves. Now, you used to play the earlier waves, so you'll remember that. In addition, we've got Kanan Jarrus. So Kanan Jarrus can, for the ship he's on, or another ship at range two, allow that ship to remove a stress by doing a white maneuver. So his dials aren't going to be as locked in. Now, it's a really great control list. Then Rao will allow him to prevent an enemy in his arc from using a token, or any tokens, to modify its dice when it attacks. And it's pretty tanky with Lorik there and Rex to reduce the impact of enemy firepower. It's not got a lot of firepower. He's going to have to position carefully. He's only got two ships with three red attack dice. Hep and Lorik. Lorik's got a nice big arc. Oh, uh, I forgot to mention he's got Ray on Lorik as well. So Ray will give him a focus token which he can use to modify his attacks. So in light of that, like, what do you think Jean-Francois' strategy is going to be here? Uh, obviously his Captain Nim build is one of the more common things we saw, especially uh, at the top tables of the face-to-face -face regionals mm -hmm. back in January. Yeah. One big difference is, of course, he cannot use, uh, he cannot launch bombs uh, after he moves. Right, because trajectory simulator has been changed since yeah. since that time. Well, it's been made to work as it was intended. Right. Um, so, if I'm Jean-Francois, uh, he's got a lot of firepower, he's got harpoons on both ships. Uh, Boba is great at brawling at range one. Um, he's got glitter stim on Boba and Dengar, so this Dengar, this Boba is good at shooting even at range three. Um, I would nevertheless not uh, engage the list head on. I would take Fit and Nim, spread them out, and force Jean to commit to one side or the other. What Jean is going to be looking to do is he's going to be looking to grind down one or other targets as quickly as possible so he can turn on the other one. So long as he's flanked by these guys, uh, he'll be in danger. Um, Jean? Sorry, go ahead. It's, it's interesting rock placement, too, I see it. Uh, it almost seems uh, designed to to avoid a fight in the middle, especially the four rocks on Jean Francois' side. Mm -hmm. Now, I wasn't there for the rock. Uh, we, we unfortunately weren't able to cut in uh, until after the uh, the movement started, so I wasn't able to see who placed what rocks down. But it, it almost seems that sort of setup was engineered by Jean Francois to prevent uh, uh, Jean from coming up the middle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree. And maybe breaking formation, mm -hmm. forcing Jean to break formation. I mean, that's what he has to do. What Jean wants to do here is to block with some ship or other, preferably Hef, keep uh, Jean pinned. So oh, they're both Jean. <laughs> uh, keep Jean Francois pinned so he can get to work on that pinned ship. Uh, but I think one of the reasons for all the debris, okay, we see a four straight from Boba. And Boba does not have engine, so this is going to be a slow-moving Boba. Uh, and he's got a four straight as well for him. So for now, he's keeping them together. The obvious thing for him to do is to turn them both next round. And what is Fen doing? Is Fen doing a one straight? He is. 
So one of the things about the, the debris, I think the debris is there on Jean Coelier's side, so that he can plow heft through it. And because he is Canaan, he can then come out of whatever position he's in stressed, even with a white maneuver. And the U-Wing has white turns, two turns, um, as well as all the banks uh, to use. So it's a lot of maneuverability from that ship, so long as he can clear stress easily and doesn't get snowed in under stress. So he's barrel rolled, little old Fenrau out in the front, which tells us he's most likely looking at a big turn with his list next round. Right, right up the middle of the board there. Yep. I mean, it's the best thing you can do when you're a lower PS squad um, of four ships. Just keep your arcs pointing as much as you can towards the enemy. Keep the pressure up. Try to push them into bad positions, even before you engage. Jean-Francois was quick on that fire spray dial. He's got a plan. Well, one of the things he could do is just a 4K, right? And then <clears throat> at the turn after that, maybe do a, a hard two down towards our side of the board. Maybe come up behind um, Sean that way. Yeah. I mean, of, a hard two wouldn't be a great choice there. It would leave yeah. him stressed and he wouldn't be able to lock for his misses. I see. But something like that might work where he looks, I mean, he looks for all the world like he's going to do a left turn. If he decides to do something other than that, it might throw Jean off the balance. But if Jean comes slow and steady at him, maybe not, too. Uh, most of the ships in this formation, rebel formation, on the bottom, uh, only have two turns that are white. Uh, I mean, between all of them, two turn is the only common turn. That's why. So we have the expected two turn from half. And you so so you think the rest of the rebel ships are just going to turn up in line behind? Yep. Uh, let Hef make first contact. Yep. Perhaps even absorb some of the the damage in the first exchange. Exactly. That seems to be the, the way that uh, Jean plays this. Okay, he's got a three turn uh, with Rex. He'll probably make use of a barrel roll. Nope. He forgot about the big YMCA arms <laughs> on the uh, on the U wing. Now, I really like what they're going to do with 2nd Edition and, and use the, the, the plastic of the ship to indicate things about the game state. Right. Uh, you know, with the, the position of the U-Wings wings, the X-Wings wings, and stuff like that. But there are many games where you have to stick them at a funny position just to keep them on the table. And It looks jump. like a reinforce there on yep. uh, Sean's side with Lorik. So he is already expecting... I mean, he has to prepare for the possibility that Boba will do the obvious three-turn and chuck a harpoon missile into half. Oh, it looks like you were right, Aaron. So he's just coming at him with Boba, which isn't too surprising. That's what I mean, it's a good engagement position for Boba, because what he can do is he can throw his missile here, and next round he can, like, three-bank ship right and just get the heck out and shoot his butt guns behind him as he goes. Well, also this way, he's managed his his distance. Uh, it seems perfectly. It's hard to tell on the screen, but it yeah. looks like the only uh, rebel ship that's going to be able to fire at Boba will be Hef. Mm -hmm. So he's not going to have to uh, eat a lot of damage in this first exchange. Yeah. And, um, I mean, that's one of the uh, inevitable downsides to flying a four-ship of the U-Wing. You end up in this conga line situation if you have to turn. Uh, so it looks like... Looks like just in distance, too. Yeah. So he's got half, but he doesn't have to deal with low rec. That is absolutely what he wants. Also, Rex will not be able to stick anybody with a suppressive fire token this round. Right. That's great. And Nim's not going to be a part of this first round. Well, that I mean, that looks like he's setting up a trajectory simulator yep. uh, drop next turn. Yep. Right in front of half. Let's see what kind of bombs he's carrying. Oh, he's got the bomblet. So uh, you can splatter some damage on um, Jean's rebels uh, as he feels with the bomblet. He's got extra munitions on both of them. 
So disengaging is actually a good strategy for him. Plus, um, once that list gets in tight on Nim, it can really do a lot of work. On oh, him. yeah, with the one uh, vision die that Nim has? Yeah. You can just get chewed up very quickly. Yep. So maybe with that barrel roll there, not only is he uh, looking to plant that bomb right in the center of that corridor that, uh, that's been set up, but uh, maybe he's... I, I don't know, if you can tell me, Aaron, <laughs> if he's planning on also perhaps splitting up both Bubba and, and Nim, yeah. uh, forcing Jean to decide which direction to take his goal. Yeah, because... Uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but Jean's list works as long as it all stays together. Yep. Right? So maybe forcing uh, Jean to decide which target to go after. Mm -hmm. It's not that hard for, uh, say, if uh, Jean Francois splits his Nim off to the right and then Bob Effect goes off to the left. Yep. Uh, Jean picks a side. I mean, it's very easy for either of them to K turn afterward. Yep. And come up behind. So I guess Fenn did not bump there? Wow. Uh, and he's getting the flight assist boost. I'm not sure if that will give him range to Boba, which is what he'd really like there. He is close, very close. But uh, we'll see. Now you're going to have to remind me about Fen. Mm -hmm. When he says they can't spend tokens, mm -hmm. uh, does that include target locks? Yes. Target locks is a token. So it really all comes down to whether he's in range or not of... I don't think he's in around. It's oh, just... Oh, oh, oh. Looks like it, actually. Looks like he's it. They've got range. I'm not sure they have arc. Oh, so Fen has been assigned to stress, which means he did have range and arc. Or maybe the stress is being put down. Yeah, it looks like he's got it. So that's great. It means Boba can launch the missile, but he can't mod it with his target lock. Uh, he does have chips, so he will get... get he might feel lucky right. and just roll the dice. Um... He's got two rounds of things, so I think he might as well. Well, I mean, if you get a if you get a harpoon condition off right now, the way it is, yeah, it's really oh. no better time to do it. And I'm dumb. Uh, Boba has Dengar, so he doesn't even need oh, the target lock wow. for rerolls. Because Hef is a unique character, he gets two rerolls on that. I mean, he's got chips, so yeah, he totally spends the missile. Very likely gets four hits, and. Hef will have two greens and a focus token on the other side, plus low ricks reinforce. So if uh, Jean Coelier is very lucky, he'll only take one damage in the harpoon condition here. So it looks like Bob is going to fire, but it's not going to be a harpoon missile? He decided not to spend the harpoon, wow. but he had all the mods he needed. I'm not sure why he hung on to it. So we end up with two hits only. And we did, I think we did determine its range too. So, well, his opponent reminded him of yep. Dengar, I think. No. Uh, so, it's a primary shot, so Jean spends his focus, and no, he only spent low Rick's token. So, he took one damage from that? Or no, it was just one. It was, he took none. Sorry. No damage. Okay. Pardon me. Um, so, this looks like half shooting back at, uh, or no, it was, was pen for Fenral. Yeah. And Boba took nothing. Now Hef's going to shoot at Boba Fett. Yeah. And this is the shot that uh, the Rebels really want to get shoot through. And it looks like we had three hits on two of eights. So absolutely nothing happens. And uh, Open Boat says the mods have gotten crazy in this game. Um, and you notice when you say it out loud. I agree, Open Boats. I'm looking forward to 2.0 with, you know, it's more, at least the promise of more modest mods going on in the game. I mean, Boba's got, on that shot, he had the target lock to re-roll, which he wasn't able to use because of Fen, but on top of that, he had Dengar. He had, he could have spent his Glitter Stim. He could have had Boba's re-rolls if he's been range one. And he had uh, the guidance chips to modify as well. So it's, what's that, five mods? Potential five different mods going on? Well, I think in, in competitive X-Wing, much like uh, a lot of other competitive dice games where, where dice is a big part of mm -hmm. the game itself, uh, you know, Aaron, that I play a lot of Armada. It's, it's yes. the same situation Armada, right? Like, 
Well, I think when you're playing casual uh, X-Wing or casual Armada, it's a lot more about, you know, these interesting combinations. But, and I'm not disagreeing with what Open Boats is saying about the amount of uh, mods in this game, but it, it definitely does seem like every single mod in, in a lot of competitive lists is all about, um, you know, negating the variance of dice. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, but what's available in the game has a big impact then on how the game goes. And right. so a lot of the lists you see are those where people can get four or five mods on their ship, right? And if that's not possible to do, if they have to do more modest things, then you have more variants at play, right? which is interesting. Um, hopefully less overall damage coming through uh, over time. So you would say that uh, JF came out huge in this first... No, sorry, not, not Jean-Francois. Jean came out mm -hmm. huge in this first exchange because uh, it looked like... Uh, it looked like Hef was just going to eat a harpoon missile yep. without any sort of retribution. Yep. Uh, but his positioning with Fenerau especially dissuaded John from even firing a harpoon missile, got himself close enough so that now, you know, didn't take any damage. Yep. He's going to use his, uh, his relative advantage in health pool mm -hmm. to leverage some of that, those control elements that you were talking about. Yep. So, yeah, I, I think now it's uh, up to Jean-Francois to uh, figure out how to get himself out of this without taking a lot of damage on either Boba or Kim. Well, I think he should straight up disengage with Boba, do a three bank away, uh, and assume that the rebels are going to move forward and, and left towards him or straight towards Nim, which I think they're more likely to do. Yeah, I think if, if I was... Uh, Jean, I would just ignore Boba Fett for now and charge straight at Nim. So Ben will be able to nerf a target locked harpoon shot right. out of uh, Nim just like he did with Boba. Um, now, of course, Nim is going to throw that uh, bomblet forward, but that's raw variance. And it's likely to get one damage through in each ship. Right. The only one who's really in the danger zone there is Rex. And with this kind of four ship list, if you lose Rex a couple rounds in, oh well, doesn't matter, right? Yeah, that, that he, you know, that was worth the fourteen points. I mean, Rex is there just simply for his suppressive fire. Yeah. I mean, these two extra attack dice, which versus one agility ships, is great. Right. Now, suppressive fire isn't that great against uh, an a bomb chucker like Captain Nim, right? Because no. he's not really about shooting. Yeah. His his uh, his guns at enemy ships. But, uh, I mean, uh, the suppressive fire is great against the harpoon missiles, so most likely if Nim does come forward, he's going to have to try to shoot Rex away, rather than take the suppressive fire for next round. Right. Um, if he doesn't shoot at Rex, then um, you know, that's applied next round, and that's such a pain in the butt going down and die. Either on uh, Nim's primaries or on his TLT. He's got a TLT. That's something I failed to note. So Nim might just turn away here. He might throw the bomb right. and two turn out. Okay. Jean is going for Boba. Well, I mean, this is just a straight up bump, right? That's good for Jean uh, as long as he stays within, uh, as long as Bob stays within Arc and Hef. Yeah. We might actually have to check the. Uh, the card for Hep, right? Sorry, for Zeb Crew, mm -hmm. to see if it says that the bump must be well within the front arc. <laughs> okay, well Jean is all in on Boba. This is a good trap, but we have to remember that it. Range one. So long as Boba is at range one of ships, he gets a reroll on defense for every that, ship that's in range one. That was, and he's that, got glitter stim. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why I, I, I had said that I think maybe it wasn't a good idea to go after Boba Fett and instead uh, go after Nim first because Boba Fett does have all those defensive mods, yeah. like you mentioned, yeah. that uh, make him an unappealing target. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna have that magical turn that you're gonna get all these. Uh, all these range one shots, but like you said, Glitter Stim is just going to severely blunt the force of that attack. Looks and, like, yeah, he's going to take an <coughs> evade, pop the Glitter Stim, and tank to the extent that it is possible. The big question here is will Jean Coalier use Fen to nerf Nim shot? 
Okay, so it looks like Rex and Hef at least will take the bomblet. Maybe even Fen, depending on what he does. Yeah. So Scum Boba, sorry, Scum Nim is unaffected yeah. by his by own, his own bomb. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so Alkaline Divide helps us out and reminds us that uh, if Boba had been touching uh, Hef, uh, they both would have got to shoot at each other so long as Boba was in Hef's arc. Right. That's what I thought it was, but I couldn't quite remember for sure. Didn't happen, so it's not of great relevance. I mean, this is pretty sweet. This is... Bob's Bubba's setting up to uh, make Jean chase chase his ship. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, uh, Nim circles around that debris field and comes in behind, mm -hmm. maybe even throwing a bomblet generator in front of him. Mm -hmm. Yep. So he got himself pincered a bit. Yep. With this setup. So we have Nim taking a target lock for later on Hef. And we have a one bank. One bank isn't white on uh, the She the Pete dial. Oh, interesting. Uh, at Is least it I not? thought it wasn't. Does he have an upgrade? No. Uh, Anywho. Anywho. I'm not sure what just happened there. Um, okay. So it looks like Fen coordinated. Uh, to Kane and, Kane, it was Kane and Jarrah separately. Oh, okay. Right, right, right. Good call. Uh, so Patrick Lengua asks, does anyone have link to the brackets? We don't, Patrick. Sorry. Oh, dropped the... Uh, yep. Some serious table rage happened here. I'm kidding. Julia. So. Totally Oof. All right, so that was clever as all heck then. Jean used the one bank, unanticipated one bank, to clear the stress with Kanan, assigned an action to Lorik, who took a reinforce, got a focus token from his ray card, and we've got a shot over here. Looks like a TLT shot. Oh, nothing. Yep. Uh, Hef spends his token. Takes nothing. It's fine. You get two shots with a TLT. And he gets another two. Hef is unlikely to dodge this without Lorik's help. Oh, he's spending a lock. Jean-Francois is trying to decide whether or not to spend a lock. He's leaving it. He's going with two. And oh. Hef will have to decide whether or not he wants to spend the reinforce on this shot. It all ends up the same, so right. he might as well. You might as well, right? Because he's not being shot up by anything else. Well, he's got Boba. Boba hasn't shot yet, I think. It doesn't look like... Well, that's true. I guess I was thinking about Lorik being shot at. Yeah, it's going to be a four dice primary, fully modified, unless Fen activates, which he doesn't seem to be doing. So we got Boba uh, going for four with Glitter Stim. So Hef takes three. I was going to say that uh, Jean Francois, you didn't have a lot of luck with that bomblet generator, but uh, dealing three damage to Hef there. Mm -hmm. It's pretty significant. So Fen misses whoever he was shooting at. We have a low rec shot, which. Just out of range one, I think. Range one? Oh, that's Just nice. out of range one. Oh, okay. Oh, and it's bad dice. 
So he spends the focus. I wouldn't have bothered there because Boba has re-rolls and right. litter stamps. Yeah. Or maybe it was against Nim, I don't know. And Rex also gets nothing, and we're back to Hef. Hef rolls a big three, that's nice, but Boba oh. will re-roll on defense and get what he needs to avoid the whole thing. So that was pretty bad for uh, the Rebels. That was actually, I mean, we saw last round where uh, Jean-Francois had an opportunity to do a lot of damage to the Rebels and it didn't happen. This was like basically the reverse situation mm -hmm. with uh, uh, JF, uh, you know, escaping that, that kill box set mm -hmm. up by Jean. And now the chase begins. Yep. And uh, correct, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Ewing does not have a K-turn or anything like that, right? So, in uh, 1.0, right. the Ewing has no K-turn, but it has a red stop. Um, and what it can do is, at the end of, a, end of a round, it can declare to use its title to shut its wings, get one less defense die, and then on the next round, uh, it can use its stop to do 180. Yeah, to switch and face the other way. I, I don't think John is going to do that here. I think he's probably just going to ram Hef into the back of Boba, maybe even disengage him. Hef was hurt too badly there to go down to one green die versus this incumbent fire. You mentioned John pulling a pretty impressive showing at Canadian Nationals. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Made top eight. Yep. Uh, I think losing only to Duncan. Was it Duncan or Jeremy? Jeremy. Jeremy Howard. Yep. In the bomblet of doom. He's fighting against the bomblet here again. Yeah, a lot of a lot of people uh, pleasantly surprised to see a Ewing in the top eight of a major tournament. Oh, the, the stream loved him. Yeah. So this is a really tough round for Jean. He has to decide how he's going to handle the next few rounds. Um, I, also, I also do want to say that uh, it seems like the, the Quebec meta, uh, maybe it's just this tournament, mm -hmm. or maybe it's just just the way it is, but they seem to be a lot more experimental with the, the stuff, perhaps taking a page from your very own prototype Toronto League. Maybe. I mean, <laughs> our scene was pretty experimental back in the day, too. Um, and uh, over time, people gravitated a lot more towards, uh, you know, what they saw was successful on the web. So that is something that happens. Uh, a lot of people here are from very diverse regions. Of course, uh, yeah. So you, we, you take a look at, uh, I think there was, at the beginning of the event, they, uh, Bruno, mm -hmm. who we had on stream Bruno last Lundell, round. Bruno yep. He, uh, he announced uh, which teams exactly were attending. Yep. So he just he listed them off at the beginning of the round. I think it was something to the order of like six or seven different teams. They're all wearing their, their uh, respective uniforms. Yeah. Um, I think uh, Jean is a member of Frog Squadron, I think it is called. Uh, yep. Yeah, he's from Quebec City. Mm -hmm. I think he also does some video content. Uh, yeah, they do. For X Wing. So it does a bump. Now, he, he did this move knowing that uh, at least Lowrick was probably going to, unless Lowrick's doing something like a uh, four maneuver, is going to bump into Hef as well. Yeah. Like, it's unfortunate. Uh, you said that Hef couldn't afford to uh, switch stances. Mm -hmm. to reduce his, his dice, but perhaps I was thinking maybe he could have turned uh, towards the top of the board, mm -hmm. done yep. that move, and then next turn did a 180 and start. See, the trouble with all back. that, and the trouble with the way the, uh, the title works in uh, 1.0, is it takes so long, and you're so vulnerable while you do it. Right. Uh, 
So you want your Ewing coming in as a fighter. It's three red attack dice in this list. He's got to keep it on target. So I guess he decided this was the best way to do it. He's going to get bumps with both Hef and Rex and have no mods. He's doing the two turn. I guess he's hoping it will make it. Ooh, I don't think it will, but we're going to see. It'll be close. You know, the way uh, the way Jean is playing this scum Boba Fett reminds me of uh, one of my favorite lists way back in the day, which was uh, Cat Scarlet. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. I mean, it's a bit different here, but one of the things you would do with Cat Scarlet is the, on your very first turn, you do like a 4K or something, yeah. and immediately it'd show you're behind yep. to the opponent. And. And like we were talking about last round, this seems... Here comes the seismic charge. Ooh. That's going to get uh, Rex, Lorik, yep. F, maybe even Fen. I mean, I can't see... Uh, it's, it's, it's very likely that Fen did, what, a two bank or something like that? I think whatever he is doing, he's going to be yeah. somewhere where he can try to coordinate his guys. Yes. Boba's gone and done a three turn. So that doesn't put him uh, doesn't put him in arc for anything. No. So that's great news for Jean. And just dropping we a bomblet have a just totally gratuitous yeah. bomblet. <laughs> Drop. I think that's just a. <clears throat> Because you, you forget once, and then all of a sudden you're just going to keep forgetting. Uh, if you drop it every turn, then it just becomes routine, you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. I find it showy. No. Okay. I'm like, you know, yeah, yeah, we know you got ball, but stop <laughs> showing it off. Yeah, all right. this is this is great what, what yeah. Jean-Francois has done here. Set well, up uh, so no damage on both sides. He's got both his guys stressed now, and if Fen does have Arc on Nim... He can prevent Nim from using his target lock right. uh, to modify his dice. And then he's going to have arc. Um, it doesn't look like Fen will be in range of that seismic charge. Tough to tell. I guess we'll see when we come to the top of the combat phase. Yep, totally gratuitous bomblet was gratuitous. Um, and we'll see about the seismic. We definitely got low rick. Looks like we don't have Rex. So that's Ooh. good news for Rex, good news for Fen. All the Rebels have to worry about is the Harpoon missile, or, well, fire. It might just be fire from, from Nim this round. Still, the trouble with this position is this chase position for Jean is not great. Hef's nope. not going to be able to get a full turn next turn, I think, to keep up with Boba. Lorik's not in a bad spot, but his guns alone aren't going to make a huge difference. They're not going to be enough to punch through Boba's defenses in any meaningful way. He is spending the harpoon. Oh. Fen harpoon. is taking the stress to prevent the use of the target lock. We have hit crit with guidance chips that becomes hit double crit. Uh, and we have Hef rolling... Eyeball evade, so he'll take two more damage, one of which is a crit. Did He's, the harpoon go up? Uh, well, he wasn't assigned to harpoon before, was he? No, I don't think so. No. So the harpoon condition is applied, I'm showing us something. Draw their fire from Draw their Lorik, fire, yeah. okay. So the crit is going on Lorik. <laughs> it's great news. Uh, it was to be thrust control fire, but it didn't apply. Sorry about that, that was, that was a misclick, but... Yeah, uh, draw their fire, move that uh, one damage on. So, Fen is hoping for nice dice here. He doesn't get him, just one hit. Goes through anyway, one damage on Nim. Nim don't care. And we have a range two Lorik on Boba. It's decent, two damage. Boba has. Takes them both. Hooray for Wookiees. Oh, Does it Hef doesn't, might have a shot. Doesn't look like it. No. I mean, if he does have it, it's in range three, not range two. But I guess not. Nope, nope, they're pointing. 
And it looks like uh, you just called the judge over to uh, right. to see if indeed it is in range. It doesn't look like it is. Yeah. Still, you hope. Also, I mean, when you see players doing that on a stream, you never know what their visual angle on the table is. Of course, so, yeah. you know, I mean, they ask for a judge because they can't see. So once uh, once Jean ends up losing one of his big damage dealers, Hoff and uh, Lorik, mm -hmm. it becomes a lot harder for him to actually um, throw enough red dice to, to make it past, you know, bombs. Yep. Especially with bomblets on the other side. Uh, and there's another round of seismics on Boba, it should yep. be noted. So if Hef does do the two turn, he's going to get seismic. And that's rough, because Hef's got to be on hull now. Oh no, he's just on two. Wow. Things are a lot more rough for Hef than I thought. You know, uh, one, uh, one move that uh, Jean-Francois can do, he can do a one bank towards the bottom, mm -hmm. um, then shoot at Hef, just finish him off yep. with his... Uh, oh wait, do you mean a one, one, one two towards the board edge? Sorry, a yeah, bank one. Bank one towards the bottom. Oh, stress. I don't think there's enough board edge to do a two turn after that. Oh, you don't think so? That's suicide if you're a fire right. spray. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, you, you've got to look <laughs> at those board edges and you've got to go, nope, I'm not doing it. Although, in 2.0, you're going to have a medium ship with right. a boost and one turns. Fire spray is going to be great to play. All these games where, you've, where we've flown fire sprays and we get trapped facing a corner and you're like, that's sure. it, game's over. Yep. Uh, we'll no longer end up like that. No, I think he just does a one straight with Boba. I mean, best Hef can do is two, and then he can shoot him with his back arc, fully modded. Although I think he is still carrying... No, that, he lost the, uh, the suppressed fire token. It's really Jean that has to go in the tank here and figure out what he's going to do with uh, <clears throat> with uh, Nim harassing his rear. Yep. Is he going to break off and maybe send uh, his Captain Rex and Fen Rao after, after Nim? Or is he going to just keep chasing Boba Fett with all his ships? I don't think he has any great choices here, to be honest. Uh, I mean, he might just disengage half for the points, but on two hull... Hef is not going to be able to afford to joust either of these guys. Either of these guys will outright kill a two-hull Hef coming back at them. Looks like we're still on dials here. Yeah, it looks like Jean is uh, taking his time with uh, Captain Rex and Van Rouse dial. So he may be indeed thinking about that split off. Mm -hmm. Personally, if I were him, I would K turn Rex here. Mm -hmm. um, just to get Rex coming in behind whichever one of these guys he wants. I think I would. I think Hef is dead. Turn Hef out. Get him out. Last checks on dials. Well, I really hope uh, lists like Jones here are, are still possible in 2.0. Sort of mix and match, combined arms, janky rebel lists. They're one of the most fun things to play. Many of them have been surprisingly competitive in 1.0. A lot of that stuff I think is meta-sensitive. Sorry? A lot of that stuff I think is meta-sensitive. Yeah, for sure. I mean, 
four tanky ships is you know, pretty good, right? Um, regardless of the meta. So it looks like a bump here, yeah. which uh, it's not going to be able to get any tokens off as a result of this. So yep. And he's going to have to rely on uh, Lorix, Lorix's ability to prevent some type of damage. But we do have the 4K from Rex. Yeah, you called it right. No. And maybe just a one bank from Lorik so he can get the reinforced token. Oh no, he can have Fen coordinate Lorik to get right. reinforced. Looks like a hard two instead. Yeah. But that reinforces is essential because that seismic is going to drop. Hef's going to take a damage. And then he's on one hull. He has to tank fire from both it of It looks these like guys. a bump though with yep. that hard two. But Mid Fen can clear his own stress. Right. And then coordinate action right. for Lorik. Lorik might be out of focus tokens at this point. Can't see his card. Yep, there's the seismic. He may also have decided that, given how things are, Hef's going to die one way or the other. Might as well just make Hef draw the fire from the other guys. Right. He does a three bank with Boba, keeping him going fast. So he doesn't have boost. So if he wanted to go fast, that was his only option. Stay as far away as possible from Lorik. And he's got Dengar, so he's got attack mods anyway. Oh, the other reason for the three bank is he wants to use Nim's trajectory simulator. And here it comes. Oh, well, that's not good. I mean, he's going to hit his own uh, Bubba Fett with that. Yeah, it looks like he will. I mean, he was eyeballing I, I, it. And I don't even know if he's going to hit anyone else. Uh, I think he's that hoping long. that he can just get some free damage on Fen. Because the sooner he kills Fen off... Right. Uh, the sooner the control elements of this list are like half as good. That, but that seems that seems like an awkward because I mean normally you're going to do that with. Hmm. Two straight, which is green. Clears the stress. So this series of maneuvers uh, all depends on whether Fenrod decided to chase uh, Boba Fett, right? Mm -hmm. if it, it looks like if he turns away, then this wasn't a very good maneuver. Oh, you're right. He did get it. It looks like he might have got Fen around with that. Yep. But if Fen doesn't have Arc, he can use the Flight Assist Astromech yeah. first, then decide his action, his real action later. It does mean Fen is not going to have Arc on anybody unless he goes into the bomb radius. Oh, he's checking to see if he already has Arc on Nim. I guess he did have arc. So he's just going to go for it. Barrel roll in so he can shoot either Boba or Nim. Mm -hmm. And then coordinate and reinforce to Lorik as I expected. Try to keep half alive. Maybe we have the Hulk on um, half wrong, too. That right. Could, that could be something happening. Oh, man. Yeah. So we got one damage coming in on... Oh, it's the bomblet. So one damage to Fen. Not so bad. And, yep. Gonna do so for Boba as well. Oh. Oh, no. Okay. I think. Yep. He's picking up the die. Nice. He takes two on Boba. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, that's why I thought that was a risky move. I mean, well, Boba Fett does have the uh, the shields to spare that, but... Yeah, I think we missed the damage earlier, so it does look like he started eating into the hull. 
Ooh. It's a bit scary. All Lorek needs is a lucky shot here. And uh, Bubba's going to hurt. Like, if he just rolls two hits and a crit, Bubba blanks again. That could be Bubba limping away. So here we go. So distance two shot from Bubba to Hef, looks like. Yep. Three dice. So he, does, be... he does get a bunch of modification from Dengar. Yep. He gets to re-roll two, which he doesn't need. It's oh. three hits. So Hef needs something way better than that. That's it. It's dead Hef, right? Yep. And the harpoon effect goes off, and Lorik takes one. It's crazy. Yep. Hef goes. Yeah, I'm not going to be sad to see the harpoon go. I liked it thematically, but in terms of the math, it was just too powerful. <laughs> I think it was just a, a case of overcorrecting in the other direction when it came to ordnance. Yep. So and and I, Harpoon was the answer to a lot of the power creep in the last couple of waves. Right. right. It was keeping the power curve going up. You needed four attack dice with full mods in order to hit stuff like Asajj of Entrance. And that's where it was, but you know, it certainly killed the heck out of everything else. Did Fen, did Fen take a shot? Did Fen take a shot? I missed it. Mm. Yeah, he just took a stress there, so maybe... Oh, the scum guys were moving first. Yeah. Never mind me. I'm hungover today. So we got three damage going into Fen. Fen rolls double natties. That is a cause for celebration. Looks like Lorik was in range one, so he evades the whole lot. Nice. Yeah, that was some luckiness. Well, at the very least, I mean, uh, it looks like Lorik's been doing a lot of defensive work. Yep. Uh, with, with the draw the fire and the his his ability with the reinforce. Mm -hmm. But I mean, as I was saying earlier on this match, he he's lost uh, a lot of his offensive firepower, and I don't think I, I'm not sure if Lorik can be by himself enough to take down uh, both these ships. You know, Nim's almost untouched. Bubba Fett is on hull now, but mm -hmm. I mean, he's just going to keep kiting. Is it range two or range three? It's very close. Looks like range two. Mm -hmm. I mean, Bubba can... He's got no engine, so he can't get that far away. Oh, that's what Lorik wanted to see. Three big ones. I mean, a crit would have been sweet. Bubba gets nothing, can re-roll nothing. Takes three damage and drops to two hull. So, things are starting to turn around a little bit. Yep, Rebels aren't out of this yet. And we got nothing. So the Rebels are in that position where they're going to be throwing some largely unmodified dice at the scum guys. And if they're lucky get spikes, that'll punch through. If not, uh, they will probably wither over the next few turns. Still, the Rebels are much better off than they were a turn ago. Uh, we've got a straight move here, probably a three coming from Rex, where he can't get bomb -lidded. That's nice. I didn't see... Okay, I see Rex's suppression token over on Nim. So Nim's TLT will be firing way less more efficiently in this upcoming round. Fen is unfortunately stressed and he's got Kanan so he can right. remove that stress with the white maneuver but he's going to have to go through that debris and get another stress. So his nerfing power is not going to be available this coming round. Now, is it true, Victor? Are you considering coming back to X-Wing? Yeah, with 2.0, I mean, I haven't played I haven't played in a while. I stopped playing around, uh, I think, the release of Wave 7. As you know, uh, I've been spending a lot of my energy trying to build up the, uh, the Toronto Armada yeah. base. 
And you've done Actually, an amazing we, job too. Yeah, we got we've got a we got a local Toronto boy, uh, Moose Green, eighty five, who's criticizing our casting style. Uh huh. Yeah, well, we'd like to see if you could do better, Moose Green. Actually, he's been on stream. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he does really good uh, commentary. Actually, he was uh, he did the uh, he helped out with the commentary for the Canadian Armada National. Yeah, you're way too nice, Victor. He, he yeah. was terrible. He was awful. Get him off stream. He's a bit abrasive, though. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta you gotta do uh, you gotta do explicit advisory before you put him on. He's Velcro. That's what he is. No, I'm I'm looking forward for 2.0 and. Uh, I know that the PTL is uh, doing their annual PTL Open tournament uh, yes. sometime in late September. Yes, I think the you guys are planning on doing it a week after after the drop of Tupac. yeah, almost immediately after the drop. The, the so that's actually going to be really interesting because yeah. that's going to be I think the first. Um, I mean, I think it's safe to call it a major tournament. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not quote unquote official, like say a regional or anything, but. Like the defeat here today, it is. Yeah. Um, it represents its region fairly well. In right. our case, Southern Ontario, here Quebec and uh, Ontario as well. We've got a bunch of guys from Ontario coming through. And we're hoping to get uh, once some of these players uh, maybe drop out of the tournament, decide they've had enough. They're they're probably not going to leave. They they may want to come on and. Uh, you know, help do some commentary. That we're we're thinking of hopefully when uh, get Bruno back on cam or on microphone, and get Bruno and maybe one of the other local Montreal or Quebecois guys to uh, do an all French cast of a of a game. Sure, that would be pretty cool. I think. Well, it, they asked us to come and do this, right? They did, and they yes. did want uh, English commentary for the most part, which I can understand. You know, they want exposure on a wild field, but that's not to say that there shouldn't be French going on here. I think there was someone uh, last round saying in the chat that there's uh, a lot of these Montreal guys, the Millennium Condor podcast themselves, they have a lot of fans in Paris. Oh, they have international fans. Yeah. They've got fans in Belgium, uh, Guyana. They've got so I, I think it's France. really it's really cool to to tap into this other uh, other com like huge international community of um, mm -hmm. mainly French speaking X1 mm -hmm. players and to be able to bring uh, some games from people who are featured in that meta, you know yeah this so, is another another tough round I mean I, I wanted to point out at this point that there's only a three point difference between uh, Jean-Francois and Jean, and you know maybe uh, what 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 Jean can do is start concentrating on Captain Nim, get his shields down, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden he's up another what twenty three points. Well, Nim is a small ship. Oh, that's right. So yeah, until bad, two point oh, yep. half pointing him does nothing. You're right. You're right. Uh, I mean, it's just the, the the model looks so big. It is. <laughs> I get confused. <laughs> it's going to be a medium ship in 2.0. Right. I think. I think it's one of the ones that's going to be medium. Um, but uh, yeah, I might just try to kill Boba. Boba doesn't have any great move mm -hmm. here to clear uh, the range of uh, the rebels' fire. And uh, at range three, you know, Boba can take an evade token, yep. but that's it. So if uh, the rebels get hot dice. They can finish him. Okay, so Rex is setting up. I'm not sure why he did that. I think what he's trying to do is stay within uh, Nim's range one bubble, which right. is TLT, but away from uh, the primaries, from Nim's primaries. So Nim can't shoot him and remove the suppressed fire token. And he's also barrel roll, probably to be close to Lorik. We've got another three bank here that won't clear stress. Leaves Boba at range three of both Rex and Lorik. Um, so if... But no defensive modifications this time, right? Luke yeah. Sim's gone. Yep. So again, if uh, Lorik gets lucky dice like he did last time, bam. I don't think he has another focus token to spend. Nim is trying to go through Fen. Yeah, I'm curious why uh, Nim didn't drop another bomb with his trajectory simulator this time. He may have just forgotten. Okay. Because that would have that would have hit uh, Lorik, I think, right? It's true. 
He also may not have been, in, he may have been more worried about where he's going to end up here. I see. Um, there's not a whole lot, a lot of room there. If there isn't, then Nim is just going to shunt back to the part of the turn uh, where he fits. Right. Yep. And that's it. So good news, bad news for the Rebels. Uh, bad news is that Nim is going to be shooting on Rex, most likely. I mean, you can take a puny, what looks like range one shot, unmodified, on thin. Oh man, he took oh, the crit heck. from the debris. Oh no. So what is that crit? It's a direct hit. Oh, oh my wow. god. That was what a swing. It, it it almost seemed like he was uh he was if he played his cards right, he could have crawled back uh an advantage, but now, you know, he went over the rock, got another stress, took uh took a direct hit, and he's um now in range two or range one of Boba Fett's real art? Looks like range two. Jeez, yeah. And and I think if Jean Francois remembered to drop his bomb lift generator, he could have got a two for one there. Yeah. With his, Maybe uh, even had strong. 10 off the board. Yeah. I mean, not that he could have planned that, because doing two damage for from sure. a debris cloud is unlikely AF. Uh, I mean, he may, Jean may end up trading Jean Francois. Uh, ben for Boba, but that's okay for sure. Yeah, that's I, fine. It doesn't look like. Does it, do, do you think Boba's uh, got Finn around an arc though? It doesn't look like it. It's close. The amount of time I've spent peering at things on stream, yeah, I'd go with yeah, but you never know. So it looks like perhaps Jean-Francois is going to elect to shoot at Rex with Nim. <clears throat> it's probably the right call. I don't know. Three unmodified dice on Fen who can't modify himself is fine. It's good. Certainly some decision-making is going on here. We've got 17 minutes left in the round. We may not see every ship die here. There's a lot of Nim left. There's a lot of low rick. Well, actually, not that much low rick. It's a tough game for sure. I think he's made a decision. No, he's asking a question. <laughs> You know what I haven't seen a lot of here today is so I haven't seen much Kylo Ren. Nobody seems to be flying him. I see Thai Phantoms. Right. I see lots of rebels. I don't see a lot of Thai defenders actually. I can see one over there. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, Captain Nim shooting at Rex. Three hits. Yep. So uh, Lorik's going to turn that into an evade. Looks and like Rex lives. Yeah. With one crit, though. Yep. And that crit is? Oh, he's drawing his fire. Yeah. So okay. Lorik's going to take the crit. I didn't see what it was, however. Okay. Console fire goes on Lorik. Ouch. That's not good. There's certainly worse crits. Wow, four ship rebels is very popular here. There are ten lists, at least ten. Ten lists, just a quarter. Quarter okay, so of the tournament. This looks like uh, Fen Rao taking a shot at Boba Fett. Whoa, that was what he wanted to see. Boba Fett takes another damage. Yep. Oh boy. And it looks like Lower may be able to finish him off if he gets the. Uh, yep. It's all about dice here, variants yeah. here, boys and girls. So it comes down to in the end two on three greens and. Oh, yeah, that's it. That's it. So there's the last damage through on Boba, and Boba is down. Yep. So now that Boba's down, there's 15 minutes left in the round. 
Mm -hmm. uh, oh. Captain Rex actually gets a shot off. He's going to shoot his little TIE fighter dice at Nim. And he gets one hit. Another one goes through. So Nim is on two shields. And suppress the fire condition again goes yep. on. Uh, Which is great Captain news yep. for Ben Rao. Because he's double stressed. And the person Nim would like to kill most. So I think Fenrau rabbits. Lorik does a, uh, a turn back towards Nim. He would end up probably eating another bomb, let generator bomb, if he does that, though. Well, there's nowhere he can go except fast forward to right. dodge a bomblet. And then he's given uh, Nim his butt. And that's just so much worse that... Uh, He's got to just hope to get lucky and not take too much damage from a bomblet. I mean, bomblets are pure variants, so sometimes right. it's best just to throw yourself in there if you're not that you're not that close to death. I mean, we've got a five-hole low rick. That ain't great. Oh man, he's got inspiring recruit on low rick. Wow, I didn't even notice. So he can pull both stress off then this round. Nope. Oh. I'm wrong. Kanan Jarrus is dead. He has to do a green maneuver with Fen and pull both the stress off. Sorry, folks. Hung over today. A little oh. dull-brained. Open Boat says uh, he was surprised Carlo re never really caught on. It's surprisingly forgiving and a lot of fun for yeah. the person piloting it. You know what surprises me, Open Boats, is I've flown uh, a lone wolf blackout build, and I fly expertise Kylo both with advanced sensors and that's really good you don't absolutely need to stick with push the limit both of those things give you built in mods which last over turns I've enjoyed flying both of those um, and they're pretty good I'm surprised that nobody tried them out everybody's stuck with push the limit um, on their Kylo builds I guess that's because they can run away further and faster but I think that's not really in the long run what you want to be doing over the course of a game with Kylo dodge some arcs, but you can't spend the whole game running. I guess you can, but you don't do well with MOV if you do that. Even if you win. So John can afford to lose Captain Rex and still win. Yep. Maybe he can throw Captain Rex as a body block or something like that? Absolutely. But he's got to take that debris cloud. Right. Rex is on one hull. No, no, he's on two. Pardon me. Um... It was because of that draw that draw their fire earlier, if you know, right? Yep. So, I don't know, two straight here. I mean, he's got to decide what he thinks Nim's tactical goal is going to be. Well, the pressure's on Jean-Francois, right? So he's Absolutely. got to be a lot more aggressive now. He can't just simply throw a bomb and run away. Yeah. He has to watch out from those primaries from Lorik, because a lucky roll from Lorik can take away half his health in one shot. So Rex going straight. <laughs> yep. Maybe uh, trying to block Nim if he if he's anti if Nim anticipated uh, chasing Fen Rao as he turns away as well yep. as Lorik as he turns in. This could prevent the turnaround uh, and do any sort of action. It's good so, so I think that was a good anticipatory move from uh, Jean there with his Captain Rex. Ooh, look at that! Some precision flying out of Lorik. Nicely and, done, Jean. And look at this too. If he, if he correctly blocked that turn, then that's still going to put him at range one of uh, Lorik's guns. Yeah. So that's that's really good, too. Now it just all remains to see what... Um, oh, yeah. What Lorik's got a console fire. Captain. Yeah. He's fingering a do, focus. Do, do you just risk it? Risk For one the, round? Uh, yeah. yeah. I think the bigger question is, do you go with the reinforce here to help your guys? He does. He could have gone with the focus, but he can't be sure of a shot. Nim might just disengage, try no. to come back around and use TLTs. Got a five straight, which is red. This is a bomb generator, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> uh, actually, it doesn't look like it's going to tag anyone. Maybe nope. just out of range of uh, Lurk. Yep. Yeah, I think if he if he had dropped that bomb last turn, yeah. uh, he would have been in a bit of a better position. But look, he's going to turn and run. Yeah. I mean, the worry here is the Rebels just disengage. 
Yeah, and I, I don't think uh, Jean has the time to do this, to, to run away and circle back around, because he's, uh, mm -hmm. he's down about 20, 23 points, I think. Well, he can hope to kill Rex with his TLT here. Right. Um, and uh, Lorik did take the reinforce, so, you know, the odds are not great that he's going to punch through uh, enough damage to do two on Rex with the reinforced token there. Look at that. Fen can do an action. <laughs> what would you like to do, Fen? Do you coordinate... Um, well, you can't coordinate Rex because he's stressed. He could coordinate Lorek to fix his console fire. True. Yeah, it doesn't... Does it? I don't know. I didn't see it. No, it wasn't. Oh, it was. It was in range. So one damage for uh, our boy Lorek. Now he's very lucky he won't take that console fire damage. Whew. Lucky. What the heck was that? I guess that was it. No, he's just he's just oh, showing us the console, console fire. fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thanks, John. Uh, Open Boat says, yeah, the ship, meaning the silencer never got appropriately explored. Yeah, I quite agree. The generics are really good with advanced optics. I mean, you can put just advanced optics and auto thrusters on one, and it it's great. So, so the silencer in 2.0 is going to have to wait until the first order. Yep, and resistance. Out, right? yep. Apparently, there will be a new sculpt at some point, which will be smaller, proportionately. Uh, oh, I see. They're seeing if the TLT shot is obstructed. He is shooting Rex. And he spends the reinforce. Nice. Yep. And this next shot cannot kill Rex. And it's just one hit anyway. And Rex goes, yeah, what else? I wasn't feeling good about Jean's fortunes, uh, I think, after turn three, mm -hmm. where he started chasing Boba Fett. But mm -hmm. uh, well, I think it's actually looking like he might even win this game. I mean, it's the old adage, have more attack dice on the table and throw them more times, even right. if they're not modified. Uh, there was some luck involved. I think there was some really bad dice in Boba's defense. Right. Did a damage just get through on him? Something happened. Yeah, he threw two dice. Uh, I'm not sure why he threw those two dice. I think it was Fen's shot. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I mean, here... The Rebels just disengage. Jean Coelier sails off into the sunset with not a great win, but a win. And Nim, Nim does a does a 4K fit here. Uh, he can. Uh, yeah, yeah, it does yeah. fit. Okay. Um, Talon roll is probably a better choice to the left, and then the round after, do a green maneuver, try to target lock someone, and get a harpoon off. I think all of uh, Jean's dudes just get the heck out. I mean, this is an interesting part of a game where you decide how you're going to disengage with the possibility that you might come back around in two rounds. It's got six minutes left to go. Uh, Mastin1996 points out that Nim is indeed stressed, so he can't do a town roll or a oh, turn. Yeah. Yeah, we should have caught that because he's yeah. on a debris cloud. Yeah. His huge wings are hiding it. So, Rex clears the stress and can take a token or whatever he feels. Oh, and they're going fast by mutual ascent. I think they're trying to get one more round of fighting in. Yeah. Yeah, looks like Fen is going to bump. Doesn't matter. No, not a bump. Nice. So it's a bit of an anticlimactic end, I think. Uh, depends to it depends on what uh, 
Jean-Francois can pull off on the next couple of turns. Again, mm -hmm. kill, killing Captain Rex is not going to be enough for him. He's going to need to go after the much more slippery uh, targets of Fenrau or Lorik. Yeah, Lorik is the most expensive ship in uh, the Rebel list, so you know if you can get him, that would be great. He's got a harpoon. It is in theory possible, but with Fen nerfing a harpoon yep. shot, he's not going to be able to do it easily. I would say like three rounds until contact, three more rounds of positioning, right. unless uh, the Rebels want it to happen sooner, and I don't see why they would. Yep, four straight. Too cool for school. <laughs> Easy graph. Yeah, I need coffee too. I think I've had three, and it's not been enough. Um, all right. Running away. Doing the three turn. This is a nice set of moves. Right. He's getting himself back in formation. That's nice. Or a quasi-formation, we could say. A loose formation. He's got the lower PS guy in front of the higher PS guy. Jean-Francois does the two-turn. Stays stressed. And we got Fen gliding away. Yeah, next turn... Uh, I don't know, where's the, what's the furthest he can go, Jean-Francois Jean can go with a green maneuver with Nim? Uh, Two? I think three. Three straight is green. Three straight. I don't. I still don't even think that puts him within harpoon range. Nope. So, so it was like you said a turn ago, it's going to be three turns until yep. until contact. I think, uh, I think... I think what Jean does is turn Captain Rex back towards Nim, mm -hmm. maybe body blocks him or something, and just offers it up as a... As a sacrificial lamb, just to, because it's it, Captain Rex living or dying is not necessary to. Uh, it's worth good MOV away. though. True. So I mean, I think he's. Well, you think a fourteen point MOV is uh, all that over the long run? Yeah. Over six rounds? Yeah. Okay, we've had the last round called down the round. That was for the other table, so we're, oh, we're right, going on right. our own clock. So okay. we still got three minutes. Sure. Uh, our producer Travis just went over to the table oh, to inform awesome. them. We still have some more time left. So I would do a two turn with Rex, a one straight with Lorik, and a two bank with Fen. Have them set up to just glide in and face off with Nim next round. I mean, they can kill Nim, maybe not in one round, but in two. Oh, good. We're going to get a deal break. Wonderful. I will live. And uh, I will say that it's good on Jean for uh, speeding up his play, giving potentially giving Jean-Francois a shot at uh, yep. you know, getting one shot off. Yeah, I mean, if you're an experienced player, you can do this. Yeah. You speed up the, the, move, the way you move your ships to help the other guy out. But you take your time on the dials. I don't mean you take excessive time. Right. You take adequate time on the dials. Too many new players make the mistake of coming into the last couple rounds and rushing the thinking. You don't want to do that. Right. All right. So JF has really got it all on the line here. The noise level of this room went up a bit just because uh, a lot of the... Uh, a lot of the games have finished. Lorik is well loaded with focus tokens. Jean also making sure that on this uh, potentially final round that he, he can get all three ships firing at Nim at the same time. Yep. Uh, I mean, it, yeah, it's really unlikely that he'll kill Nim possible, but it's really yep. unlikely. More than likely, uh, he just keeps Ben and Rex on target in order to nerf the attacks. So if if, if uh, Jean reinforces with Lorik, mm -hmm. keeps Fen out of harm's way, and it doesn't matter what he does with Rex, then it, there's really no possible way uh, 
that he can lose, right? Well, yeah. barring like a direct hit or something like that. Yeah. I mean, if uh, yeah, if Lorik is reinforced and Fen gets Arc on Nim and prevents him from spending his target lock, odds are it'll be one damage on Lorik, maybe two. Right. Big deal. Could be a cascading crit. I mean, we could see cascading crits on either side. There does seem to be no opportunity for uh, Jean Collier to run away here. Probably doesn't want to. So time is up. Uh, now, I think that that does mean that uh, they don't get this last round off, right? They haven't no, they put do. their dials down? They do it. The dials, so if time is called uh, during the planning phase, uh huh. Uh, you do have to play it out. Oh, really? That's, yeah. So I guess that's changed since the last time I played. I don't know. I've been confused about this particular rule myself. Yeah. Uh, at this point, I'm just going with the convention. Sure. Plus, it's more exciting for us if they actually get one last round yeah. of shots, right? Make it worth our while having to describe a uh, merry-go-round chase for the last, like, yeah. 15 minutes. Oh, he just gets Rex out. So he, he rabbits with Rex. He's turning lower to face Nim. Probably reinforce here, right? Oh, yeah. He's got focus banked, so yep. he's good on that side. He'll have a two turn from Fen as well. So Ray's going to allow him to pull a focus from yeah, himself. Fen will focus, and odds are very good that right. he can't do enough damage to finish it. He's going to throw a bomb in there anyway. So the, the possibility of this trajectory simulator thing right. was the reason that in those last couple of rounds, Jean took his rebels along the side of the board. Uh, so I when see. he did do the turn, yep. he wouldn't have to eat a bomb. Now, he might actually have to eat the uh, trajectory simulator bomb here after all. close. Yeah. I would have thought it was going to be out, but we'll see. Well, now let's see what, what kind of move Jean did. I don't think that puts him in range of the bomb, though. Nope. Fan is fine. Takes a focus. A focus over there. All right, let's bomb see that. Bomb goes off. Oh, boy. That looks like it's in. Mm. Call a judge. Oh, they decided. Looks like one so, hit. One hit? Yeah. Ooh. That makes things a bit more empty. We got Lorik on three hull. <laughs> it's the crit that assigns stress, so it's right. not important. Yeah, if he can kill Fenny wins by one point. Killing Captain Rex doesn't do anything. Uh, who did he target lock? Yeah, he's he's target locked, Ben. Okay. Right. So the damage yeah. on Lorik didn't help him at all. So here's that, that second, uh, or sorry, here's that uh, harpoon missile shot. Yeah. We against seem to, Fen this time. Yeah, we seem to have lost the dice cam. I don't know what happened there. No, it's it's under the chat. Uh, it's just hard oh, to okay. see. So it looks like a one, two, three, and a crit, looks like, or four hits. Wow. Oh, bad news. Yeah. I'm not sure why he's rolling two extra red dice there. Oh, there. Okay, he rolled those by accident. So one evade uses... Uh, Lorik and I think that's it, right? No? Draw their fire. Oh, he drew oh, off a print. Nice. Oh, nice game. Wow, draw their fire did a lot of It does. This is a great card. A lot of work. Jeez. That's it's really cool that uh, Jean gave uh, Jean Francois that one last chance to redeem himself. Uh, and that was actually a really exciting finish to uh, to that game. It was indeed. Yeah. I, I, I thought I thought Jean Francois had it after like turn two or three, yeah. and then when he lost Hef Tauber without any a lot of um, 
compensation, mm -hmm. right? I thought it was he was even deeper in the hole, but he managed to, uh, to pull it out. I guess that's the reason why he made top eight at Canadian Nationals. Right? I guess so. I mean, there was a the lot of to pull stick with like itness going on there. Yeah, like he just didn't give up. That was a bad position he was in with Hef, and right. he just kept going. Um, and look at his guys: Lorik on one, Rex on one, Fen on two.